we have been talking about the concept of symmetry and the conservation laws associated with it we have seen that there are certain dynamical development of the system such that during this act the hamiltonian of the system becomes invariant once this happens we assume that there will be some operators that commute with the, the hamiltonian of the system such that this observable corresponding to the operator will be a constant of motion and the prime requirement for such a variable to be a constant of motion is that it must commute with the hamiltonian of the system and also we have seen that if this happen that is an operator commute with h and this operator happens to be a hermitian operator then it will be capable of generating a unitary transformation for the system and since this operator commute with h the unitary transformation of the hamiltonian will leave the hamiltonian invariant so that this operation is a symmetry operation so a symmetry transformation or a symmetry operation for the hamiltonian or for the system will evidently mean the presence of a hermitian operator that act as the generator of this unitary transformation which turn out to be a symmetry transformation will be a constant of motion now we will make some one fundamental important concept that symmetry is invariably related to degeneracy i hope you will be able to recall the concept of degeneracy this is the occurrence of one two or more than two eigen vectors belonging to the same eigen value not one but two or more than two eigen vectors belonging to the same eigen value once happens then that is often referred to as degeneracy and the number of eigen vectors belonging to the same eigen value often determine the dimension of the degeneracy say for example if there are two eigen vectors belonging to the same eigen value we will say that the degeneracy is two fold and if there are n number of eigen vectors belonging to the same eigen value the degeneracy will be an n fold degeneracy let's consider ket uk is an eigen vector of the hamiltonian <coughs> with eigen value epsilon k then definitely h uk equal to epsilon k uk and let's assume that there is a hermitian operator a that commute with h this is the same concept that we have been talking about from the beginning of this module we assume that commutator ah is equal to 0 and a is a hermitian operator then definitely a can act as the generator of a unitary transformation say u a of the form e raised to minus i a small constant epsilon into a or e raised to plus i a small constant epsilon into a so that u a also will be commuting with h commutator u a h is also equal to zero that means u a h product will be equal to <coughs> h u a product so u a is commuting with h now let's operate the eigen value equation from left by means of u a then the eigen value equation becomes u a h u k is equal to u a operating over epsilon k u k epsilon k is a scalar that can be taken out then this becomes epsilon k u a u k u a and h are commuting so you can replace u a h by means of h u a h into u a k u k and we have put this u a k u k in bracket equal to epsilon k u a k u k now h operating over a wave function if u k is a wave function u a operating over u k will be another wave function 
So h operating over a function is equal to epsilon k, that is the eigenvalue of the operator h belonging to the eigenvector u k, epsilon k times u a k u k. That means this is also an eigenvalue equation, but for the wave function u a u k, and you can see that this eigenvalue is the same as the eigenvalue of the wave function k u k. If you operate again u a from left side, you can get <coughs> another eigenvalue equation for u a square k u k. H operating over u a square k u k equal to epsilon k times u a square k u k. So all these eigenvectors u k, u a k u k, u a square k u k, u a power n, say in a general case k u k, all are eigenvectors of H belonging to the same eigenvalue epsilon k. This is nothing other than degeneracy. So this eigenvalue epsilon k is a degenerate eigenvalue and the degeneracy being infinite fold. There can be infinitely large number of verb functions of the format u a k u k u a power n k u k. First verb function is k u k only. So next verb function belong to the same eigenvalue is u a k u k etc. Like that it goes. So there is an infinite fold degeneracy. So this means that u a is a operator that account for a symmetry transformation for the Hamiltonian that evidently means the presence of a degeneracy, <coughs> an infinite fold degeneracy. If it's a finite fold degeneracy, see, generally there will be finite fold degeneracies, though we theoretically state that there is the scope for an infinite fold degeneracy, there will be some selection rules, some boundary conditions or some restrictions that, that will be leaving the uh, dimensionality of the degeneracy as a finite fold degeneracy. So, we have started from the presence of a symmetry transformation for the Hamiltonian and came to the concept that then there will be some degenerate eigenvectors for the Hamiltonian. But practically, we will be encountering degeneracy rather than encountering a symmetry operator or a unitary operator that will account for a symmetry transformation. So, conversely, once we think if there is a degeneracy in a system under study, then definitely there is the scope for the presence of a unitary operator UA that will account for a symmetry transformation for the system under our study. So that UA will be having a Hermitian operator A acting as its generator, which will be then a constant of motion. Symmetry transformation in length is above my item. Eigenvalue degenerate ava and a little the end. Is in the converse statement of Arnale, Karnam, Palapur practically the Mulla Angan situation and encounter the Eigenvalue degenerate ava or situation. I decum the Mulla or experiment in the outcome I took a Kandathan and Idika. Bangan Virumbo degeneracy undangil, so Bavigam item Hamiltonian or symmetry transformation Nadana Tindavanum. A symmetry transformation de generator I Trulla or unitary operator I decanum. A unitary operator in the generator I Trulla with Hermitian operator I decanum. So Bavigam item Ingene Uru symmetry transformation de generator Agana Hermitian operator HMI to commute to you. Angan Virumbo. A operator might associate with physically observable quantity or constant of motion aayirikkum allengil or conserved quantity aayirikkum so degeneracy often give rise to the conservation of a physically observable quantity now we will move on to the discussion of the various symmetry operations and the associated conservation laws this can be <coughs> conveniently studied in terms of a classification of the symmetry operation. 
Of course, all these symmetry operations are the outcome of some geometrical operation that we perform for the space and time coordinates. Hence, these symmetry operations are referred to as space-time symmetry operations or space-time symmetries. And as we have seen in the last video, space-time symmetries will be an outcome of some of the properties of space and time coordinates. These are homogeneity and isotropy. Space has both homogeneous as well as isotropic behavior. In any coordinate of space, the system will be behaving exactly identical. So that's a symmetry. And in along any particular direction also, the system will have the same behavior. That means isotropy. In time coordinate also, we have homogeneity. If you perform an experiment today and the same experiment is being performed one year after <coughs> or one year back, you will be getting exactly the same result. This means that the system is invariant under this variation of time coordinate. However, there is no question of a, an invariance of a system under or along different directions in time because time has only one direction that's along the forward direction so associated with space there can be two different property homogeneity of space and isotropy of space whereas in the case of time there is only homogeneity of time and associated with these properties we will be making some geometrical operations and associated with these geometrical operations there will be some symmetries hence the space-time symmetries are often referred to as geometrical symmetries since these are the symmetries associated with the geometrical operations the geometrical operations include displacement or translation translation means displacement rotation and inversion these are the geometrical operations inversion means inversion at the origin or reflection at the origin or taking mirror image at the origin displacement is possible in space as well as time so that this geometrical operation of displacement can offer two different symmetries associated with the displacement or translation in space displacement or translation in time rotation is possible only in the case of space coordinate so associated with the geometrical operation rotation in space there will be a symmetry and hence an associated conservation law inversion is possible with respect to space as well as time inversion in space give rise to one conservation law inversion in time is in fact an anti-unitary operation and hence will not give rise to any particular conservation law. So as such in geometrical symmetries we will have to talk about this 2 plus 2 plus 1 equal to 5 different symmetry operations and the 4 different associated conservation laws since there is no question of any conservation law associated with the inversion in space. Actually, the invariance of the system under displacement in space or time is related to the property of space-time coordinate that is homogeneity of space and time. And the invariance of the system under the symmetry operation rotation in space actually stem from the property of space referred to as the isotropy of space. So, this is summarized here. Homogeneity of space give rise to translational or uh, translational invariance of Hamiltonian, that is invariance of Hamiltonian under displacement. Isotropy of space give rise to rotational invariance. Homogeneity of time give rise to translational invariance of Hamiltonian in time. And once you look into these first two geometrical operations, displacement and rotation, the coordinate, either space or time coordinate, will be changing continuously. Hence, these symmetries are referred to as continuous symmetries. Whereas, once you look into the case of inversion in space or time, all at a sudden the space coordinate 
R will be replaced by means of minus R1 suit account for a mirror image at the origin. Hence, the symmetry associated with this are referred to as discrete symmetry.